Do you know, in my head, I was just like, you deserve that. Fuck it. Mm -hmm, plotting. Mm -hmm. Hi, guys. Welcome back to my channel. Um, if you're new, I'm Sarah Asaya. And today, we're going to do another story time. Now, sorry, pork chops, like, if you haven't met my dog, I'm going to show you my dog. One second. This is pork chop. Oh, pork chop. Yeah. This is Pork Chop and her little piggy Pork Chop. It's her favourite toy. Oh, isn't it Pork Chop? Alright, fuck off. So, welcome back to my channel. If you're not subscribed, make sure to subscribe, hit the thumbs up button. So today's story time is about my one of my exes again. It's really it's really easy to pull these stories up because actually I was in a lot of toxic relationships, like just in, a, in, in, in bad relationships with bad people, like, and you never really see it, do you, until you get out of the relationship and you're like, wow, you're like the fucking devil in disguise. You weren't even disguised, you were outright just being an absolute asshole all of the time. And for some reason I was taking it and then going, but I love you. So anyway, this is about my ex getting punched in the face and how violence is never the answer. But when I mean I laughed my ass off, like I laughed. I haven't got an ass, but if I did, my ass would have fallen off from the amount that I laughed because it was hilarious. To see him get punched was not only hilarious, but incredibly satisfying after like the year of torment that you put me through. So here goes. <coughs> ah, sorry. A long, 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 long time ago, me and my ex had split up. And basically, I think this was like a year after we'd split up. He just threw out the breakup and stuff. Bear in mind, he cheated on me. That's why we broke up. He was just an asshole to me. Now, I used to have this group of friends. We'd only like newly found this slight friendship. And he basically bumped into one of those, one of the girls on a night out in the West End. And then he proceeded to tell her so much shit. So he was basically telling her that I was sagging her off behind her back. And he was like, oh, um, I can prove it because I know this story and that story and blah, blah, blah. Now, when she approached me about this, I was like, <coughs> are you kidding me? Like, the guy that lied and lied and lied to the closest girl to him for a whole year, and now you want to believe all this stuff that he's saying to you on a night out when he's drunk and full of, like, spite and revenge. And she's like, well, how would he know this? And how would he know that? And I was like, well, obviously he was my boyfriend. So when stuff was happening, I was sharing that with him. But I was like, not in a malicious way. Like I was sharing stories with him. He's then turned it into a malicious story and he's relaying it back to you in that way. You dumb bitch. I was angry because I genuinely was like, if you believe him, then then you're just a bitch. Like, how could you actually think that? I, I was just a bit like, I'm gonna explain this once and once only and I'm not gonna repeat myself or go about the rounds. Like, if that's what you think, then cool. We're done, like, this friendship is done because clearly we're not actually that close because you're stupid. Like, for real? And like, for some reason, everyone was on this guy's dick, like, Girls used to throw themselves at him. I, I look back to it now and I just think, why? Like, he was ugly anyway. He was actually ugly. Like, still is ugly. There was something about him, you know? Obviously, I found him attractive at the time because I, you know... But, if we're going to be real about it, he's ugly. Alright? You're ugly, bro. Anyway, so he proceeded to tell her all of this crap completely like exaggerated stories and then made me look like a really bad person so these girls stopped talking to me like i was getting threat like it got to the point where they were like threatening me and stuff like i'd see them in westfield and be like oh yeah like <coughs> i'm not the kind of person that fights like grow up like 
Like, I tell you to your face that you're a bitch, but I'm not gonna fight. Like, I'm not a bloke. It's just not... It's just not a thing to do. Like, you can discuss things and you can have disagreements. There's no reason to fight about it like an animal. Like, we're not in the jungle. This is not a fucking zoo. Like, relax your tits, bitch. This happened... He made me fall out with like a load of what I say load of my friends or like two two girls. But I was I was pretty pissed about it because we spent some good time together, me and these girls, and like in my head I was like, they're my friends. So I was really shocked by the way they acted around that whole thing. It was all just weird, and I was just like, you lot of bitches, especially him, you the biggest bitch of all. And I was just like, you know what? Fuck this and fuck all of you. Fuck it. One night I go out into the West End and I hated going out in the West End because you know it's like you go to the club, it's the same faces, it doesn't matter which club you go to or whatever night, <clears throat> these people just alternate, like, like West End's their second home, and they, I just knew I was going to go to this night out, I was going to see loads of, like, really obvious people, <clears throat> just wasn't into it, I'm a bit of a hermit anyway, I don't really like going out much, I'd rather be at home in my pants, like, drinking tea, like, that is, that is my go-to thing. So, I end up going on this night out, um, he's in the club and he's one of those guys you know that's like oh i used to play football in it but then i had an injury and like that's him he was playing football and then he had an injury and then he changed his instagram bio to club connoisseur club connoisseur more like cheap vagina connoisseur but that's what he was doing. I just don't know if that's an official title, but I assume that means promoter. So he went from footballer to promoter, which is, which is nice. I was out with a really, 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 really good friend of mine. Uh, me and him have been friends for absolutely years. And his a lot of his like brothers and friends and stuff run the doors on a lot of these clubs so it's generally like when you when you go you go in through the back and it's all very vip and very suave and i love going out with him because i'm really like i'm just an anti-social bitch like i don't know why i'm just like i don't like small talk don't really like people chatting to me when i'm out so whenever i'm with this guy it's perfect because he's really really protective of me in the sense that like he will always make sure I get home safe. He will not let any weird, like, dribbly drunk guys come and speak to me. Like, he's very protective, and I love him for that. And he always looks after me. So we'd gone on this night out. Now, one of his, one of his friends had just got out of prison, and I think he'd been inside for, like, six or seven years, and he'd done something quite bad. And um, I won't name it, but the guy was a really nice guy, like... You know, he didn't do nothing to me, but I don't know if in general he was like the nicest of people. But everyone in, in pretty much in London knows this guy, so he was well known for being a bit of a shit. And he was out with us, and we had just come out of Mayfair Club. I think it was like two o'clock in the morning. And I'm stood outside, and I can see James coming out, and I was like, oh... I want to leave right now. My friend is like somewhere in front of me chatting to someone outside. So I was just like, oh, this is so shit. Like, I really do not want to be here. And all I can see is James like trying to call me over. And in my head, I was thinking, hmm, if my friend that I'm with sees this, he is going to kick the fuck off. Like, he doesn't like guys approaching me. Yeah? And if he sees him approach me, he is going to kick off. So I was like, Hmm, how can I play this to my advantage? Wouldn't it be funny if, <clears throat> after all the torment he put me through, he got a bit of it back? Like in my head, <clears throat> I justified it as karma. <coughs> I thought a bit like, it would just be funny if like my friend was to completely show him up. Because he would say to him like, what are you doing bruv? Like, don't chat to her, she's not for you to chat to. So I thought that kind of argument might actually be quite funny. And I had had a bit to drink, I was, it was a bit childish of me, but in my head I was like, <laughs> plotting. <laughs> so as James is like trying to speak to me, I ignore him because I know that he's gonna come towards me and then my friend is gonna clock him and he's not gonna have it. So as it is, James swans over and tries to be like, oh, I'm really sorry about all the shit that I caused and blah, blah, blah. And re he's really, really trying to like apologize and stuff. And I'm just like, forget it. Like, I don't want to know, I don't want to care. And I've made my actions really like, 
dramatic and I'm like, I don't care, James. I don't want to know. Because I know if I dramatise my actions, my boy is going to see, he's going to come over and be like, what are you doing, mate? Sling your hook. And that's exactly what happened. Now, these two get into an argument and if you're... My, James wasn't from London, so he didn't know the London scene, but everyone else in Mayfair knows my friend. And they know not to chat shit to him because he's a bit of a, he's just, he's just well known in London and you just, just don't chat shit to him because he's a well respected guy. People like him, just don't do it. But oh no, off James's mouth goes. Now the guy that comes out, <laughs> that just came out of prison, has obviously clocked these two arguing and he wants to go and stick up for his boy so off he he comes over and i'm just like at this point i was like oh okay this is not quite how i wanted it to go i don't think this is going to end well and then he starts laying into james going who the f and hell do you think you are who are you speaking to and then james got a little bit too big for his boots didn't know who he was speaking to and was like who the f who the F are you talking to, bruv? And I was just like, oh, that is a big mistake, James. Big mistake. Like, if you don't know, <clears throat> the thing is you never know who anyone is and what people are capable of. This is why I don't get into arguments outside. Like, I don't want to fight anyone. I don't care if you're like two and a half feet tall. I don't know you. You could be off your fucking head. You could take out a knife or a gun at any point and then just like, stab me or shoot me in the face like you never know what people are capable of so I always keep my mouth shut I always say my please and thank you and I apologize if I've done something wrong or if people are like <laughs> giving me dirty looks and stuff I like to smile and be like hi because then they look absolutely retarded for trying it I'm just like hi <laughs> hello but like I'm just not one to start arguments Anyway, as soon as he asked this guy who he thought he was, I was like, oh shit, oh shit. And out of nowhere, this guy just punches James in the face and I just see this six foot two heap of shit onto the ground. Not gonna lie, I was like, you deserve that. And not deserved it because you did a load of shit to me. You deserved it purely from how you just acted in that scenario. And yeah. I don't know, in my head I was just like, you deserve that, fuck it. Come on troops, let's go. Yeah, and then after that, he was floored and we got our stuff and we got in the car, we fucked off and we left. And the whole time I was just like, oh, so satisfying so so satisfying now let me remind you again please that violence is not the answer and that probably wasn't the best thing for him to do but at the time and me being a bit younger and remembering all the trauma that he had put me through i was like mm, karma that's your karma but yes um don't punch anyone don't resort to violence it's not good but yeah that's the story time of how my ex got punched in the face and floored outside of a mayfair club that's that <laughs> i hope you enjoyed the story time guys as always make sure to subscribe below and give the video a thumbs up if you did at the moment i am uploading two videos a week i am doing wednesdays and sundays so yeah, make sure to join the family and stay tuned for another story time or leave comments below if you want to see me do anything else. All right guys, love you loads. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you on the next video.